Hello everyone and welcome again to our class. This is the second lesson in arts and what we are going to talk about today is arts from neoclassic and romantic periods. So we will also discuss the different artists from neoclassical and romantic periods. For our most essential learning competency, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify representative artists from neoclassic and romantic periods and reflect and derive the mood idea or message from selected artworks. In this video, I will also discuss the performance task for arts, so I encourage everyone to take down notes and pay attention to our discussion. So let's get started. So just to have a short recap of what we had discussed last time, we compared two different art movements during the time of of 1700s up to 1900s and those two movements are neoclassicism and romanticism. The neoclassicism refers to literature, theater, music, and architecture which were inspired by ancient Greece and ancient Rome's classical art and culture. It is also known as the Age of Enlightenment and the works of art such as paintings, sculptures, and architectures are typically depicting Roman history that exalted the heroes of Roman times. However, Romanticism is a movement or trend in which the artists of neoclassical period sought to break new ground in the expression of emotion. So, kung neoclassicism is more on reasoning, enlightenment, Romanticism naman is more on emotion. So, it embraced several distinct themes such as the longing for history, supernatural elements, social, just, social injustices, and nature. And also, landscape painting was made more popular during the time of Romanticism because of the romantic adoration of nature by the inhabitants. Now, these two movements are so different from each other. Like, for example, in terms of tone, Neoclassicism is more calm and rational, while Romanticism is pretty subjective, spontaneous, and non-conformist. The subjects of Neoclassical is more on Greek and Roman history, while in Romanticism, it's more on the legends, exotica, nature, and violence. The role of art during the time of Neoclassicism is morally afflicting and inspirational, while during the time of Romanticism, the role of art is pretty dramatic and carry viewer away. In terms of the different elements of arts, Neoclassicism uses lines that are using linear style wherein the outlines are sharply defined through controlled brush strokes while during the time of romanticism the lines were painfully uh, that were were obviously less restrained <laughs> yan so sabi nga doon it's painterly style compared dun sa linear style ng neoclassicism and sabi nga dun, in terms naman dun sa texture, kita natin sa mga paintings na the texture of neoclassicism is smooth wherein no brush strokes can be seen while in romanticism often has visible brush strokes. So to further understand what neoclassical art and romanticism is all about, let us study the lives of neoclassical artists and their famous art. The first artist that we are going to discuss today is Jacques Tuvis David from 1748 to 1825. He is an influential French painter and considered to be the preeminent painter of the era. And his subjects of paintings were more on history. Some of his famous artworks are The Death of Marat, Ode of Harati, and Napoleon Crossing the Alps. Itong lahat ng mga painting na ito, nagpapakita siya ng mga characteristics ng neoclassical style. Like for example, the death of Marat, it shows the portrayal of the revolution re revolutionary martyr named Jean Paul Marat and he was murdered noong panahon ng French Revolution. So it's very historical. Now yung namang Otoharati, it depicts a scene from a Roman legend about the dispute between Rome and Alba Longa. So dito sa, sa Otoharati naman, pinapakita dito yung tatlong brothers na kung saan nangakaw sila doon sa kanilang tatay na they will sacrifice their lives for the good of Rome. Na kung saan pinapakita yung pagsalut nila doon sa kanilang tatay na nagbibigay sa kanila ng sword. So pinapakita, kitang kita dito yung context ng neoclassicism ng balance at saka yung pag-adore nila sa Roman culture. 
And then lastly is yung Napoleon crossing the Alps. We know that Napoleon Bonaparte is one of the famous heroes and emperor nung panahon ng French Revolution. And pinapakita dito yung, yung hano ina-idolized or ina-idealized ng mga tao yung ginawang historical uh, act ni Napoleon when he crossed the Alps nung panahong ng 1800s. The next neoclassical artist that we are going to discuss is John August Dominique Indres from 1780 to 1867. He was a pupil of Jacques Louis David and regarded as one of the great exemplars of academic art and one of the finest old masters of his era. His paintings were usually nude, portraits, and mythological theme. Some of his famous artworks are the Portrait of Napoleon on the Imperial Throne and Apotheosis of Homer. So parehas yan na nagpapakita ng historical painting and yung Roman culture. So yung, for example, itong ni, the Portrait of Napoleon, it depicts Napoleon in his decadent coronation costume seated upon his golden encrusted rune hand resting upon smooth ivory balls. So si Napoleon kasi is considered as a, an emperor nung panahon ng French Revolution. And isa, isa siya sa mga historical figure nung panahon na iyon. And ito namang si, ito namang apotheosis of Homer depicts an image of Homer receiving all the brilliant men of Rome, Greece, and contemporary times. So pinapakita naman dyan yung mga, yung mga Greek and Roman stories nung panahon nung ancient times. The next neoclassical artist is Roman Adam. He is an American architect of the neoclassical period who designed two well-known American civic buildings, which are the White House and United States Capitol. So, ito yung itsura niya. So, itong si Robert Adam, siya ang nag-design itong White House at saka ng United States Capitol. So, both are from the neoclassical time. Another famous architect from the neoclassical era is Henry Labrosse, who designed the Library of St. Genevieve. And lastly, we have Charles Gagnier from 1825 to 1898, who is also a French architect who designed the most famous classical block of all, which is the, Pal the Palace Garnier, or also known as the Paris Opera House. Now that we are done in discussing neoclassical artists and their famous artworks, now let's proceed to the discussion of romantic artists and their famous artworks. The first romantic artist is John Louis Jodor Zeruko. So he was the first French master and the leader of the French realistic school. His masterpieces were energetic, powerful, brilliantly colored, and tightly composed. Some of his famous artworks are the Char are Charging Chasseur, The Wrath of the Medusa, and Insane Woman. So his first major work revealed the influence of the style of Rubens and an interest in the depiction of contemporary subject matter. Si Rubens, di ba, is one of the popular Baroque uh, painters. So he meron influence si Zero Code ng kanyang mga gawa. And then, The Wrath of the Medusa, portrays the victim of the contemporary shipwreck. The people on this raft were French immigrants en route to West Africa, while Insane Woman is one of the several portraits by Zero Co made of, mentally dis made of the mentally disabled that has a peculiar hypnotic power. Another famous French painter is Eugène Delacroix from 1798 to 1863. He was considered as the greatest and most influential French Romantic painter, and his most popular artwork is, is Liberty Leading the People. So the woman holding the flag of French Revolution personifies liberty and leads the people forward over the bodies of the fallen. Next is Francisco Goya from 1746 to 1828. He was a commissioned romantic painter by the King of Spain. Ibig sabihin ng commissioned romantic painter, meaning patron niya si yung King ang Spain. So he was also a printmaker regarded both as the last of the old masters and first of the moderns. Some of his famous works are Sather Devouring His Son, The Third of May, and Burial, Burial of Sardine. So, yung Saturn devouring his son, 
depicts the Greek myth of Titan Cronus or Saturn who fears that he would be overthrown by one of his children so he ate each one upon their birth. Now, yung next naman is yung 3rd of May, Goya's masterpiece that sought to commemorate Spanish resistance to Napoleon's armies during the occupation of 1808 in the Peninsula War. And lastly, the burial of Sardin is a Spanish ceremony celebrated on Ash Wednesday and was a symbolical burial of the past to allow society to be reborn, transformed with new vigor. The last two popular artists from the Romantic era is François Rude from 1784 to 1855 who was best known for his social art which aimed to inspire and capture the interest of broad public. Some of his famous artworks are The Departure of the Volunteers and Joan the Ark. So Departure of the Volunteers portrays the goddess Liberty urging the forces of the French Revolution onward. And Jean d'Arc portrays the national heroine of France. She was a peasant girl who led the French army in the momentous victory at Orleans in 1429 that repulsed an English attempt to conquer France during the Hundred Years' War. And lastly, we have Anton Louis Barye. So he was the most fo famous animal sculptor of all time. And some of his popular artworks are Hercules sitting on a bull and Theseus slaying the Minotaur. So now that we are done with our discussion, let us discuss our activity for today. But actually what I'm going to to explain to you is the performance task in the arts. So the title of the performance task is, Is That You? So for the directions, be an artist of your own, create your own sculpture, either human, mythological, or animal figure. So ipoportray mo lang yung sarili mo through a sculpture, and bahala ka kung gusto mo na iportray ang sarili mo through a human or a mythological character or even animal figures. So what are the materials that you are going to use? You may use either clay or soap. So, kung ano yung mas preferred yun na material that is accessible to you. And next is yung knife or cutter or nail pusher for carving out your own art piece. So, on a separate sheet of paper, write your reflection using the guide questions below. So, halimbawa natapos mo nang gawin yung sculpture mo, yung sarili mong sculpture, whether it's a human, mythological, or animal figure. The next thing that you are going to do is to answer the following questions. So, what are the questions? Number one, what is the subject of your artwork? So, patungko saan yung subject, yung artwork na ginawa mo. Number two, why did you choose this subject? For example, pinili mo na gawin na yung human figure mo is more on mythological character. For example, you want to portray yourself as Zeus. Ganyan. So, bakit yun ang pinili mong subject? And lastly, what, did you feel, what do you feel while doing your artwork? So, ano naramdaman mo habang ginagawa mo yung artwork na yun? And lahat ng yan, isasagutan nyo sa separate sheet of paper. So, sa case natin, you could use uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs para masagutan itong reflection dito sa guide questions natin. Now, if you have any other questions regarding our performance task, because this is 70% of your grade, I encourage you to just give me a personal message or you can actually comment here on this video presentation so that we could address all your concerns regarding our performance task. So there you go, and I hope that you have learned something from me in our discussion about neoclassical and romantic artists and their famous artworks. If Again, if you have any questions or concerns, just give me a personal message, and we'll try to address yung kanyo mga questions regarding our topic. Again, thank you very much for attending our class, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye!